Dear students, now we are going to discuss the effects of rain in satellite communication. It is also known as rain induced attenuation in satellite communication. In general, in the range of C band and KU band, the rainfall becomes the major cause of the signal fading. Here signal fading represents the attenuation of the radio waves. Okay, so here the rainfall results in the attenuation of radio waves. Attenuation means reducing the signal strength by scattering and by absorption of the signal energy while propagating through the rainfall. Okay, so in this one the rain attenuation increases with increasing the frequency. That means the attenuation is directly proportional to the frequency range. So we can say the rain attenuation in the KU band is worse than the C band. Okay. So consider this diagram. So in this one, we can consider the rain droplets in the elliptical shape. Okay. So here the signal radio waves from the satellite is in the some arbitrary polarization form. Correct. So when a radio waves with some arbitrary polarization passes through this rain droplets, it affects the polarization of the wave which in turn produces the depolarized wave. So it will affect the signal polarization and hence it increases the attenuation range as well as increases the noise level. Okay. So simply we can say if we are going to transmit a signal like this, we can get the signal with an attenuation as well as with some noise. Okay. So that's what given here. When a radio wave passes through the raindrops, it affects the polarization of the wave and produces the depolarized wave. So rainfall causes the attenuation of the radio signal and also increasing the noise level. Okay. In satellite communication, the uplink and downlink both are having different rain fade margins. So first uplink rain fade margin. So whenever we are going to transmit the signal from earth station to the satellite, the rainfall degrades the carrier to noise ratio at the satellite in two ways. One is to affect the uplink power. The next one is to increase the noise temperature. So this uplink power can be recovered by using certain techniques that is uplink power control method. So in this method, the uplink carrier power must be chosen within the suitable limit to compensate for this rain fading. Okay. So here the output power from the earth station is monitored by the central control system in the earth station. So and then the earth station high power amplifier. So HPA means high power amplifier is used to increase the signal power to meet the fade margin requirement. Okay, so we are going to amplify the signal to the required level to compensate the rain fade margin. It provides 1.9 dB margin over the clear sky condition. So we have to fix the margin as 1.9 dB. Okay, so the next one is increase in the noise temperature, but it is not the major cause factor of signal fading because the satellite antenna is pointing towards the hot air. So the noise temperature increased by the rain fading is not a big issue in the uplink system. Okay. The next one is downlink rain fade margin. From the satellite to the earth station, the rainfall causes the attenuation by absorption and scattering of the signal energy. So similarly in the downlink also the rainfall degrades the received carrier to noise signal ratio in two ways. One is by attenuating the carrier wave. The next one is by increasing the sky noise temperature. Okay so here we can represent the rain attenuation caused by the absorption in dB as A. Okay so the square bracket represents the value is in dB. So next the effective noise temperature of the rain is given as T rain is equal to T A into 1 minus 1 by A. So here A is the 
power loss ratio we can get this value as 10 to the power a by 10 okay so here ta is nothing but the apparent absorber temperature so it is a function of a physical temperature of the ring okay so here this absorber temperature is nothing but the physical temperature of the ring and also the scattering effect of the ring on thermal noise okay the total sky noise temperature is given as t sky that is equal to the sum of clear sky temperature and the effective noise temperature of the rain okay so this is the total sky noise temperature in the downlink due to the rainfall okay next we are going to consider the typical rain attenuation curve for frequency modulation satellite system so here we have to consider the threshold margin level so it is the minimum allowable range at which the rain fades do not take the carrier to noise ratio below the threshold value more than a specified time. So we have to keep the carrier to noise ratio at the specified value not below the threshold value. Okay that is very important that is represented as threshold margin value. Okay so next one is rain rate in general the rain attenuation is a function of rain rate. So it is the rate at which the rain water level stores in the rain catch at the earth station. So there is a earth station. Okay. So in that area we have to keep a open rain catch. Okay. So whenever there is a rainfall. So whichever level is stored in this rain catch that is represented as the rain rate. Okay. So it is very important to analyze the rain attenuation in the uplink and downlink process. So it is represented as RP. Okay. Next, the specific rain attenuation is given as alpha. So that is equal to A into RP the power B. Its unit is dB per kilometer. Here the attenuation depends on the rain rate. A and B are the parameters which depend on frequency and polarization. Then the total rain attenuation in dB is given as capital AP is equal to A RP the power B L S RP. The small RP represents the reduction factor of the signal strength. Okay. So here L S is the slant path length of the signal through rain. Okay. So this is the total rain attenuation in dB range.